Well, welcome everyone. We're um, very happy to be here today. Um, we're Invisible Women. I'm Camilla and I'm here with Rachel, who's the other part of Invisible Hi. Women. We're a feminist film collective and uh, basically what we do is we try to find um, works made by women in the archives and then we try to bring them to the screens. In normal times we would do that in cinema spaces or other physical real spaces and right now mostly on virtual screens and today we're really excited um, to have been invited by Cinema Attic to speak to Elena Duque and to Azucena Lozana uh, who have joined us, um, who are part of, of Cinema Attic's program and yeah, maybe I can I can ask you guys to to introduce yourselves, and then we're really excited to get into your films, your work, um, and lots of other exciting stuff. So maybe Elena, if you can give just a quick introduction um, about where you are right now, and um, yeah, a little bit about yourself. Hi, I'm Elena Duque. I'm in a Coruña right now. I don't live here, but I participate in the organization of a festival uh, called S8 Mostra de Cinema Periférico uh, because I'm also a curator and a writer. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm Spanish and also Venezuelan, and I make films. <laughs> Lovely. And Azucena, you, where, where are you right now? Well, right now I'm in Buenos Aires. Um, I'm from Mexico City, but um, I'm spending time in Buenos Aires and Mexico City. I'm, I'm gonna try from now on spend like half of the year here and half the year in, in, in Mexico City. So yeah, yeah this is um, the city where I've been living for, for the last 15 years, more or less. And yeah, I make um, short films. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah, I did see that you had your mate there as well. Yeah. No? <laughs> Very important to stay awake. Yeah, I was I was um, thinking actually, if you're in Mexico or in Argentina right now, when I saw your mate, I was like, ah, she's probably in Argentina. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and um, well, we're really excited um, to have seen your, well, we were so excited to see your films and then after we saw them, even more excited to, that Rafa and Alberto asked us to to chat to you a little bit um, about your work. And maybe we we kind of kick off about, in the context of, of the program, gaze, play, dream are the kind of cornerstones of the program. And that is the, the idea is that it's a rebellion against narrative, moving image as an art form rather than a commercial or, or maybe um, other forms that you can see the, the medium, freedom, creativity, all of experimentation. I think that is what we see very strongly in your work. And you have very distinctive, non-narrative, playful styles. Um, that's me putting words that, out there, but do you feel like um, you're a bit of filmmaking outlaws or maybe filmmaking rebels or are we completely barking up the wrong tree? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What, what Do you want to start, Asu? Go ahead, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't feel like a rebel at all. It, I, I feel more like an outsider than a, an, as a rebel. And, and when I say outsider, I'm thinking also about uh, outsider art, like these people that, that paint and make things without formally training for it and uh, from a very naive pers perspective. So I, I feel more like this. Yeah, uh, I agree with you. I, I definitely do not feel my filmmaking as, as, a, as a rebel way to explain my feelings or my ideas. I, I believe that uh, um, we, we're kind of a, a, a little gang that is spread out around the world that uh, we sometimes uh, uh, use different formats to 
to make small films with with ideas or or some ways to um, yeah express uh, or 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 in a playful way more than a rebel way I guess. Yeah, I think you definitely feel that playfulness in your films. Um, both of you have a, a range of different styles that you use. Your films are very distinctive, but they're often very different from film to film. Um, and I did feel quite a strong sense. Um, Elena, your films really made me think of Margaret Tate. I don't know if you know her work. Oh, yes, um, thank you. I love her very much. Wonderful island filmmaker, incredible Scottish filmmaker, actually. Um, and you both had moments that really reminded me of the kind of playfulness of Agnes Varda as well, that sense of mischief. It's like definitely there and the use of photographs as well. Um, so I wondered, who is it that you think of when you make your films? Are there any artists or filmmakers that you think of or is it just purely just coming from inside of yourself, do you feel? Mm, well, as you said, Margaret Tite has always been a, a great inspiration for me because I, uh, I know her work from uh, some years now and uh and i love uh, how her films can function like a like a train of thought or a collage and how she can include like poems drawings animations all kind of images from her daily life and mix them together and i like very much this idea of, of collage and and this kind of freedom and and also this kind of uh, approach to the world and uh, well, I I also love very much uh, Robert Breer's work, which is for me a master, an absolute master. I wish I could make films like this, like with this experimentation, experimentation with uh, frame to frame filmmaking, and with rotoscope and the sense of humor. But I don't know if you can sense on uh, sense uh, the sense of humor in my films, but I hope so, at least a little bit because Definitely. I don't want to be too <laughs> tremendous. But yeah, yeah I, I have this in mind, but it's like uh, in the back of my mind as, as well as my experiences uh, and as the things I see every day. So I guess that everything you love and that you see kind of uh, builds inside you and it's, it's the basis from where you see the world. Asi, what do you think about influences and other filmmakers and artists? Yeah, well, uh, as as you were um, asking this question, I I realized that uh, because you asked while you're filming, and I, I realized that I certainly have uh, lots of favorite filmmakers and and influences and stuff, but at, at the actual time of filmmaking or or developing an idea or 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 experimenting with uh, some sort of uh, uh, process, I I don't think I'm. I'm, I'm like thinking about a specific work. Um, I, I, I rather uh, try to um, uh, take advantage of, of, of film as, as, a, as a medium where I can uh, mix uh, uh, like space and time. I, I don't, I cannot think of, a, of, an, of an, uh, an actual filmmaker that is uh, giving me um, like a part, a pattern on, on the way I, I work. But of course, if, if you look at the films and then you are uh, watching a, a program, for instance, uh, then you notice that the influences uh, come up uh, immediately. But yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to say who would be the main influence. Yeah, I think also a lot of the time, as you say, if, after you watch it, or maybe if you talk to someone, um, I think for us, as soon as we said um, Margaret Tate, like with with um, Elena, with I, I thought with La Marsalada, um, and I started to think, oh, and Margaret Tate, who's from an island, and there's like this ruggedness and water, and you know, um, the kind of like the stormy. Uh, Scottish <laughs> water <laughs> and also I was I don't know I was thinking maybe I ah, in a Coruña maybe it's the same I don't know um I think people also start kind of making connections there that maybe you haven't thought of but it's really nice that you say um that Margaret Tate is one of your inspirations that's that's really nice when it comes full circle like that <laughs> 
Yeah, absolutely. And and it's it's one of those filmmakers as uh, so when I discovered, for instance, uh, Chris Marker, that made me think that you can make a film of almost anything. Because uh, back in the day when I was younger, I thought that films were uh, a certain thing that you need to have a script or have a very serious idea for, for a documentary. And as I went discovering filmmakers, I realized that you can make small films and uh, small films about anything you can think of. Because I remember uh, the first film I saw by Chris Marker, uh, which is called um, Le Jolie May. It, it's a month, it's a film about uh, the month of, of May in Paris. That's it. And I thought, okay, you can make a film about a month. So I think I, I think better in that terms of ideas, uh, small ideas, emotions and images. I think you can really see that um, sense of making a film out of quite a small idea. Not, I don't mean a small idea, but a contained idea. Um, with your film Collection Privado, uh, Privado, I think that film really, it's a very ingenious film and it's very, it's all based around a taxonomy of objects. Um, and I just wondered where that idea came from. Was it because you had constrained circumstances? Did you make it in lockdown? <laughs> like, what were the what was the environment that made you want to make a film out of a series of kind of stationary objects? Well, that it, I began to make the film before the lockdown. Actually, it it looks like a, a lockdown film, but but it's not. Actually, one of the roles got lost during the quarantine here in Spain, and I was like very sad. But finally it appeared uh, back in the mail when I sent it to, to develop in Germany. And yeah, it's, I, it's something that uh, I don't know why uh, has always caught my attention, the collections, what you collect and what you collect it. And also because I'm, I'm also a collage filmmaker and I make collage animation, I keep like a lot of things, like a lot of garbage, beautiful garbage. So, uh, well, I, I started thinking about the value of, of those things and how uh, do you give value to objects. Um, and, and I began to think about that, uh, well, relating to, to art collections. So the, the title is kind of a joke um, about this, like art collections. And I started to think about also how the collection can tell a life. And uh, I think it's clearer for people who know me what these objects mean. And there are certain objects that there's only one person in the world who knows what mean. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a uh, yeah it's it's a uh, it's an ongoing thought. I think that that maybe places and collections are like my main interests. Yeah, I think it's um, interesting because that you say uh, like one 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 ob object has so many different meanings to everyone. Um, and I was thinking, Asu, when I watched the um, Tres Voceros, I actually mm -hmm. just moved back to Scotland from Mexico City. So oh, <laughs> so when I watched that, um, that for me was even though it's images of you know being at the market or being in, in Xochimilco, which is a part of Mexico City where um, there's a whole, um, maybe you can explain what, what Xochimilco is also to, to our, our, our Scottish um, viewers who maybe don't know what it is. Yeah, well, Mexico City, uh, it's uh, the, the, what Tenochtitlan, which was the Aztec city, used to be, you know, and 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 it's it was a a um, an aquatic city, like say for uh, with uh, channels and uh, is is that the right word translator channels like no channels of water instead of uh, streets. Oh, your microphone is turned off. <laughs> Sorry, canals maybe? Canals. canals, there you go. Okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so yeah, this um, Mexico City used to be like a, a huge lake and 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 Tenochtitlan was built by the Aztecs in, in, in the middle of lake. So it was uh, a very impressive uh, city without uh, 
without roads, just uh, canals. And so Chimilco will be like the remains of that lake. Uh, it's a very, very, very small place that uh, can give you a, a very tiny idea of what that city uh, used to be before uh, the Spanish uh, arrived in, in, in Mexico. So uh, about this uh, um, this movie, well, this this, this sh short is like a, a, it has three parts and these three parts um, are related to uh, the ideas of, of, of Mexico being away from, from it, from, in, in, in my perspective. So uh, the, the, these, these ideas that, he, that you get about home when you're away from it and, and this, uh, situations and 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 the the way that the that you behave that you don't get to realize until you're away from from your home. So the first part is uh, about the uh, monumentalism. Uh, if if you've ever been to to Mexico, you can notice that everything is like so monumental, like not only buildings and pyramids, but everything is like it has like a huge uh, scale and uh, living in Argentina it has nothing to do probably Brazil is closer to that in Latin America they also like to build uh, huge things so that is the, the, the first part that I I, I get to uh, recognize from from this Mexican idiosyncrasy idiosync is that the right word <laughs> translator okay mm -hmm. and <laughs> Great, I'm doing great. And then the second one is is about um, uh, like the uh, oral fixation, uh, talking about like we're always like eating and talking about food and uh, about what we're gonna drink and kissing each other. There's this oral fixation that I I noticed um, like later on. You know, like, uh, so I started filming just people kissing each other and eating and drinking. And it was everywhere. It's like, um, <laughs> for some reason, Buenos Aires, it's uh, the probably, I will say, the only city in Latin America that doesn't take advantage of the of the public spaces. I mean, in Mexico or the rest of, of Latin America, you get to see all this. Uh, people eating in the street and selling stuff on the streets, and it, that doesn't happen here. And it's kind of uh, if it's uh, when when you're um, among this chaos, you're kind of like uh, uh, I want to get away from here. But if you don't have it closed, then you kind of miss it. It's it's that kind of feeling. So um, and then the the third one is is the 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 the, the remains of this lake. And and uh, it's related also with uh, this idea of, of Buenos Aires being a, um, a city by the river, but you never get to see the river. So it's just a um, sense that it, the, the water is somewhere around you, but you don't really get to see it. And it's kind of frustrating. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, like these things, like they resonate so much, I think, with the situation that we're in right now. So, so for example, when I watched it, it was um, especially kind of like um, together with watching Elena's films, which are so um, more, yeah, more more based on like actual objects in a house, and then watching something that is so outside, and then especially Mexico City, and then if you if uh, what you say, the going out, the eating, there's people everywhere. There's so many people everywhere all the time. You're constantly touching. And then, you know, I go out in Edinburgh and there's nobody because lockdown and also the Scots, even when they're allowed, they don't really touch much. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of, um, so yeah, it really, for me, it really brought that sense of home back, even though in the kind of the outside sphere while Elena's films were at the same time you know in um in a more kind of contained kind of our reality in in, in the pandemic maybe <laughs> um I don't know Rachel how was it for for you kind of watching completely 
completely the same. It's quite interesting because Elena, you, you, you have a couple of films that are like very inside a house or inside objects. You've got the uh, private collection and you've also got um, Playa Cancea, uh, which, yeah, which is like a haunted house kind of feeling, which you made in 2017. But I was like, this is the story of my first lockdown. <laughs> like feeling all the ghosts inside the house kind of take over. But then some of your films are literally postcards. They're kind of pictures of a place. You've got a portrait of, of Galicia that's like beautiful and um, like a holiday album type film. Um, and then, yeah, I went to visit Camilla in Mexico City and I, and I was also like yearning for Mexico City when I watched your films. I think like, I was like, oh, that's just the physicalness of it and that um, oral fixation, which is completely taboo now. <laughs> it's like seeing that on screen, it's, it's quite amazing. Um, I wonder if um, the past year and the kind of experience of the pandemic has made you feel differently about those films. I don't know if you kind of thought about them at all or, or how has the pandemic even affected your filmmaking practice as well? Has it made you start to think differently about filmmaking? Uh, well, uh, Play Cancela is, is certainly a, a very uh, a quarantine film <laughs> for sure. And actually it was uh, programmed during, during the quarantine here in Spain by the Circulo de Bellas Artes. And I thought that, well, this is very adequate actually. It's like, yeah, it, 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 it resonates with this feeling we are having now. And about my filmmaking, actually, it's, it's um, as you said uh, before, I, I'm very like an um, indoors filmmaking filmmaker because I, I animate very much. So I work very much in a, in a little black room I have where I film a collection privada and everything is pitch dark around. And I have this animation stand and I use a lot of uh, paper goods like uh, so. Mm, I, I'm not affected by not being able to go out in the world because I'm, I'm, I'm an indoor filmmaker. Although many of the films uh, you have in your program and have to do with the, the experience of being, of being away, but in a sense, I'm, I'm always away because I, I don't know anymore where my home is uh, because of my origins and so on. So I, um, I can be in many different places in the same year because of my work or, or whatever, but I don't know. I guess I pay a lot of attention to, to the places um, I travel because I, I am trying to look for references. Mm, I'm, I'm an outdoor girl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, it was... It was uh, curious because, um, well, I guess that all the films that you're showing in this program, um, they were, uh, they they are from last year because last year I I finished them digitally, but they were actually shot like uh, previous year or like 2019 or 20. 18 or so, but um, yeah, it's it's uh, complicated for it's been complicated for me. I've been I've been uh, trying to film for the last uh, two years um, um, a, a couple of um, new friends that I have that they they work with with clocks. I'm really interested in 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 clocks and and lights, uh, uh, neon lights to. These are two characters that I've been following for the last years, and um, it's been very hard for me to to go and shoot uh, with these people because um, I need to ask for permission, and uh, I've been holding this uh, filmmaking for for a year, a year and a half, and hopefully tomorrow I will start again. But it's 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 kind of complicated. But anyways, uh, with the, the Super Eight. Um, I also find the advantage that it's it's very a very handy camera and I can kind of uh, uh, go outside and without having more complications. But um, yeah, I I'm always looking for for um, specific uh, situations and places. So yeah, I have to go there with with my camera. 
but uh, there's there's one one of the films that it's in the program, uh, Corbusier House, that it's like a very indoor film. And somebody told me about this uh, uh, last year on, on the program. It was like um, very appropriate for, for the uh, quarantine because it's like always um, happening inside the, the building and there's nothing but uh, the indoors in, in this architecture. I think that um, Corbusier film really stood out because it it feels different to the other ones that we've seen of yours. I think because it's so focused on a building and it's it kind of it's like a celebration of that building and that architecture. Did you just see it and mm -hmm. just think I need to film this? What was the relationship with that building that made you want to make a film about it? Well, it was it was um, it was curious because. Uh, I, I was visiting a friend and, and he was like, well, I moved and I, I live somewhere else, so come here and visit me. And I was like, yeah, sure. And I went there and it, and he moved to the to that building. And I was like, what? <laughs> you live in a museum. What the hell are you doing there? So um, I I spent like a like a couple of weeks there and and I, I noticed like it was it was like really crazy living in there because uh, it's it's like an actual uh, piece of art, but but it's there's people living in there, and especially my friend, he's he's from Mexico as well, and he, I mean, there, there's like a a lot of different gangs. It's like a, like the gang of the uh, that is so um, como como sería um, purista, señorita mm -hmm. traductora. Is it purists? Purists, ah, it was easier than I thought. <laughs> yeah. Very purist with, with the architecture and oh, what would have Courvoisier thought about this color, you know? Like they're so super fanatics and and there's a lot of people like my friend who don't really care. And he's like, uh, I don't know, putting posters and, 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 and things that have nothing to do and they have to ask for permission and and there's always like uh, tours of architecture students like walking around. Oh, but there's also like people laughing, people, uh, you know, kids crying and running and going back and forth. So it, it, it I was really amazed by by the fact that um, uh, the, the, all the doors have this uh, situation with the colors and so, but. People, they, they put this, they, they, uh, habitan, they, uh, they, well, they live or? They, yeah, they live yeah. there. I mean, <laughs> they, they put the stuff, uh, personal stuff, it's, it's, it's their, it's their place, right? So I wanted to, to find these little differences and yeah. Yeah, I think that really stands out in that film that you're kind of bringing that potentially quite dead museum like building alive the way it's edited the energy mm -hmm. of it is like dizzying it's it's quite overwhelming but you definitely mm -hmm. get a sense that this is like a lived in space it's not just a a kind of dead shell you know which exactly. is really interesting. yeah which actually relates again to um elena to your film and that haunted house thing the idea that a, <laughs> a building can be alive on its own that it can kind of have spirits that maybe we bring them in or maybe they were already there. <laughs> um, they can get a bit overwhelming, the ghosts in the brickwork kind of thing. Yeah, they, they live there already. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I met them. No, uh, this, this is a place uh, where I, I usually live like for one month and a half here in La Coruña for, for working in the festival. And there was one year when they uh, put me in this place and I was supposed to to be living with more colleagues from the festival. But finally, I don't know why, uh, I ended up like being alone there for one month and I worked at home. And and this was like a like a place that belonged to the to the uh, aunts, the aunts and los tios. Mm -hmm. Translator? Uh, yes, aunt, aunt uh, or aunt and uncle. Or yeah aunt and uncle of of a of a friend um who who used to live there uh, for many years and uh, it was like uh, you know with with all this uh, furniture like very old style and all these kind of ceramic figures 
and all these glasses, all these objects. And I was like, uh, it was a very a luxury apartment in, in an eighth, um, uh, un octavo piso. Sorry, say that again. Octavo piso. Eh, oct eighth floor? Yeah, uh, yeah. Eighth floor. In, the, in the eighth floor of, of a building. And uh, and I felt like very strange living there, like like enjoying all this space and all this uh, luxury around me. And I was like very fascinated with all the details in the house. So I started to make like these little animations. And at some point I, I, I got sucked in into the, the spirit of these people. <laughs> and actually I stole something from the house. I have to confess, because there was this this very fun kind of book there that is like this kind of um, agenda for for the housewife from 1971, and actually the titles are, are made with this with this book with this like uh, well this this kind of of uh, notebook when where you write like uh, the things you you have to do every day and also you. You have like recipes and all that <laughs> kind of advices for housewives and the cleaning know, list. <laughs> yeah, how to do the spring cleaning and I don't know uh, all, all kind of things that may be useful to keep the like the you know the the budget of the house and advice for taking care of the kids, all kind of stuff. So so I I don't know I just. Mm, went with the flow of the house and that was what happened did you did the housewife book make you into a better housewife did you come out with some tips uh, oh <laughs> yeah many recipes very interesting <laughs> i'm a better housewife now for sure yeah. <laughs> and um i think that uh, during the festival in la coruña you've you've worked together haven't you um Elena, you've you've curated a um, a program of us. Who's, um, so we're very big on on collaboration, especially uh, women collaborating. So um, it would be really nice to to hear a little bit about that because we have you both here. So it would be really nice to hear a bit about about that collaboration or when you guys work mm. together. Well, it was I think uh, in twenty nineteen. Or 18, 19. 19, 19, 19. Yeah. right. And well, I, I don't remember exactly uh, when I uh, I got in touch with Asus work, but I think it was a while ago. And, and at some point uh, we decided to, to dedicate um, a focus uh, on, uh, not exactly on Mexican filmmakers, but uh, we brought people from, from LEC uh, in Mexico City, uh, Elena Pardo and Morris Manuel Trujillo, and we kind of uh, reunited them with ASU. They were all-time collaborators back in the day in Mexico, and and that's how we we started making ASU's program. And uh, yeah, I think for me, it's every every year in the festival and curating things and writing about things is learning and discovering universes. Because the thing is that you can watch one film from a filmmaker, another film, and you get kind of a fragmented sense of, of what she or he does. Mm -hmm. But when you are like watching all the films uh, of a filmmaker and you're discussing with, with her uh, how to build the program and so on, you, you get to the core. I, I, I felt I, I got to the core. Of us, maybe, maybe Me? she's not. She's not agree. No, no, it's although <laughs> it's the, whole, the, the the way around because the, to me, like uh, the the um, she cured me. She was my doctor. No, I mean, I'm um, seriously. Uh, it was it was super important for me uh, to have um, um, Elenita's point of view on 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 my work because. I, she like kind of uh, helped me to organize um, the perspective of, of all these uh, short films that I was working with. Uh, I didn't notice that I was, I mean, I kind of felt it in a way, but she, she organized the films in archeology span 
and anthropology. And I, I knew that I, I was always interested in, in certain people and in certain places, but she kind of arranged this uh, uh, idea and, and that, that gave me like, a, like a lo lots of light actually by, by showing my films after this festival. I mean, after she, she, she made this program. So uh, that it's, um, it, it's super helpful when, especially if uh, like me being like um, working on lots of very short films, like they kind of we, 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 we reproduce like gremlins and, and sometimes you're out of control. You just keep on filming and filming and filming. And then uh, she goes like, well, no, you know, <laughs> we're looking at this don't you don't you see and i'm like oh that's right so it it, it now makes sense everything makes sense now <laughs> yeah and also asu is is a uh, is, uh, wonderful person it's, it's like you, you feel at home with her i have to say it <laughs> i love her absolutely <gasps> me too <laughs> <laughs> Corazoncito. <laughs> well, that's a relief. If you hated each other after that collaboration, that would have been really awkward. <laughs> Bring up all the dirt. No, maybe this is false. Maybe this is a fiction and we actually hate each other. Can you imagine that? This is a performance. <laughs> yeah, we love each other. <laughs> so then as well as, as filmmakers and curators and, and writers, you would be very good actors as well. <laughs> exactly. No, and it's, and it's really awesome that um, uh, I, I didn't, Get to see Elenita's films before before that. So uh, I met her like um, I don't know, like two years before the festival. Maybe she was here in Buenos Aires, and and well, we made friends right away, and we noticed that we both like objects, and we are accumulators, and we're like <laughs> wee, wee, wee. so uh, when when I saw her films for the first time, like everything made sense, like. Yeah, it's like that's Lenita, sure. I mean, when that's when when she said, "Well, yeah, the people who know me uh, can can relate me to to this object and this collection," and yeah, that's that's what it is. Collaboration. <laughs> <laughs> and are there are there any other future collaborations maybe on the horizon? Yeah, Lenita is gonna come to Mexico to visit me, and we are gonna eat some delicious stuff, and, <laughs> and I'm gonna invite her to do some stuff. Oh yes, and I will go. Delighted. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a great yeah. collaboration. Sounds great. <laughs> no, actually, like a like having a, a program with with Lenita. This is the first time that it's happening, right? I think so. So talking about uh, or, uh, or programs that being it together in the same place, it's, just, it's a shame that we are not in Scotland, like having fun with you guys. But yeah, uh, at least virtually, it's it's uh, it's a great exercise to to have our, our programs together and and think about our our ideas in parallel. parallel. <laughs> Help me translator. Exactly. <laughs> I think um, it's really interesting just how many parallels there are when you watch these these um, little beautiful films all together. It's just sometimes, I mean, you always know who's made the films, but the, the themes blur into each other in really interesting ways. Um, and I was thinking earlier, Lainey, you mentioned um, kind of displacement and not really feeling like you had a home maybe. Um, and Athi, that's something that comes across really clearly in your films, the kind of dual identity or the feeling of being half in Mexico and half in Argentina. Um, and I just wondered if you could talk a little bit more about how that displacement is expressed in your films and how you address that and how filmmaking helps you think about those, that relationship with place as well. Hmm. Well, that's a good one. Uh, that's 
probably one of the things that uh, I'm very passionate about uh, cinema because uh, you can uh, you don't have a you don't need to have a physical space you can mix them all together. When when I talk about uh, Mexico or Argentina, when I'm in Argentina, I say like the other dimension, dimension. It's dimension or dimension. Yeah, dimension. Dimension. So uh, you can actually do that on films. So, for instance, uh, Pantano. It's so uh, uh, I think it's in the program as well. It's it's another film that uh, has uh, doesn't have a, a, a physical space like a it's it's not a fixed space. It's a combination of, of lots of places, but. Uh, the, all these places are together by by an idea, so it's kind of an, an imaginary map or an emotional map, uh, sort of say. Um, so um, Brazil is also one of uh, the the countries that that fill my heart. So it's gotta it's gotta be there. So I I, I spent some time over there because I, I love it, and and in Pantano it it. Definitely, um, um, Mexico and and Brazil and Argentina, but they are all together by the same idea of uh, uh, like all this uh, um, like a tsunami of emotions or, or lots of things going on with uh, like a storm, and then when the storm finishes, you get to. You get to see it like a, um, this other feeling of um, oh, it's hard to explain. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna give it a try again. So uh, the um, this the space is is not the same, but the 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 feeling is is, is what unites this mm -hmm. three places. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> But um, it's um, it's it, it's hard for me, uh, especially right now that I'm I'm going back to to Mexico for for a while. That I, as Selenita says, um, what do you call home? No, it's like uh, you spend lots of time in one place or another. Uh, it's it's mostly the people and and this uh, and this experiences that make you familiar with with, with place so yeah I love this uh, idyllic maps like if I have if I want to make a continent like Asus continent is definitely uh, Mexico Brazil and in Argentina they are all in an island together hmm. Well, uh, for me, I, I guess uh, it has to do with my personal story. Is that I, uh, my my mother is Spanish and my father is Venezuelan, and I grew up uh, in Venezuela until I was 16 years old, and and then I came to live it, uh, to Spain. But it's been a while since I last went to to Venezuela, and even in Venezuela, my family were from different places. And even in Spain, I have lived in, in many different places as well. And I have friends like in, in very different cities and I've been changing a lot my location over the years. So uh, I guess that this is reflected in the films. Uh, um, I don't know exactly. I guess that, that maybe um, mm, when I think uh, about my films, many of them has have to do with with a particular place I have been staying for a while. So there's there are a couple of films that I've made here in in a Coruña. There's another film made in in uh, in, in Sevilla. Uh, another one which is not in the program because it's not digitized. And there's also another one in Barcelona. Another one uh, in Asturias. Um, so, so I guess that that I kind of uh, try to find in in the different places, like, um, that, like little things to hold on to. I don't know if if I made myself clear with that, and and also in in a in a film like as Colección Privada, which is like a, a 
a thing that is nowhere. Actually, it's like kind of uh, floating into the space. Uh, there, I, I try to put together these this, uh, two sides of my identity. And you can see like this kind of, uh, well, all the maps and, and all the pictures and the passports and so on. Well, this, these are like a clear uh, <laughs> expression of, of this feeling of, of not belonging anywhere. And yeah. I love that idea of film as like a, you can kind of maybe splice together the things that are kind of separate in a way that you can't in real life. In real life, you can't be in um, Brazil and Mexico and Argentina at the same time, you know? But in film, you can. You can splice those things together and you can move from one place seamlessly. And it's a, a way of like dissolving barriers of place and geography and time. It all just disappears. Um, which is a kind of magic power to have, I suppose, as a filmmaker, to be able to try and jigsaw yeah. it, you know? Teletransportation, that's uh, that one of the, the, the magic things about cinema. Mm -hmm. You can see mushrooms from from one place and from the other, and, and it's just you're just um, looking at the mushrooms. It doesn't matter where they are. Yeah, for sure. I think it's it's really interesting um, about the the kind of parallels that we we have seen in the films. But even hearing you speak now, that um, as you talk about the 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 personal maps, I think you said, um, and Elena, I immediately thought then of, about Elena's physical maps that she's showing on the um, and how yeah how you guys just kind of flow like this um, and how your work. Um, it's so different, but stands so so well together, as you as do you, <laughs> which is really nice. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And also, actually, as you were talking, I was thinking about uh, the reason why I use uh, so many postcards, and I call it so many postcards. It's a way of of sending a, a little piece of one place to another. So I guess this is like something you can do with film as well. Completely, and your films completely do that. I kind of felt like I'd been on a little tiny holiday <laughs> watching them. <laughs> it's really, really nice, um, especially when you can't actually leave your flat very often. It's, it's pretty nice to have that little trip to, the, to see some sea, to see a little slice of a place. It's lovely. Mm. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Yeah. And so uh, when um, are these uh, programs um, like going to be on the same days? So I think your films are spread out across a few different programs. So I think mm -hmm. they're grouped up in little groups of certain programs and then spread out across others. Um, but yeah, I've not actually seen the final lineup. So I'm not sure what conversations they'll be having when they're actually screened. Because already we've found so many conversations with our little like super concentrated program that we've watched of just you two together, um, which has been really nice. But there'll be whole other conversations happening in the program that we haven't seen yet, <laughs> which will be really exciting. Nice. Yeah. yeah. But I think, I'm, like, to be honest, I think I, I, I loved live, like watching, because we've watched the films uh, several times now and like being in the little, Elena in a sort of bubble, I thought um, that was actually quite nice. <laughs> um, but yeah, it will definitely be really exciting to see how they stand with with other films then um, in the in the context of the whole of the whole program. For sure. So I think we've asked all our questions actually. Have you got any other questions you wanted to throw in to finish up, Camilla? No, I think that we we covered most of the of the things we wanted to talk to to ask you really. Um, okay. And we've but. been down some interesting alleyways as well. We were expecting, so that's really nice. It's really nice that you two know each other and have that connection already because it's really lovely to see filmmakers supporting each other and curating each other and all that stuff. It's really nice. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for for all your comments and your questions and and, and for being involved in this. In this program, like sometimes it's, it's 
it's awkward for me when when um, when uh, I, I get some invitations from uh, like for I mean I really love when when there are like collectives uh, like women collectives and and but sometimes they ask me for for feminist films and I'm like well they're not really <laughs> my films they have nothing to do with feminism like for, uh, like in an explicit way but yeah. uh there is uh, some other ways to uh, there's some other uh feminine ways to to interact and and to cooperate and to behave and to film and so on so it, it's really lovely to 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 have this this uh, programs going on and talking to you, lovely ladies. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real yeah, enjoyed it. Yeah, yes. well, ho hopefully we can um, all get together at some point, um, mm -hmm. be it in in Spain or in Mexico or in Brazil. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll come and see your films everywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hopefully. Awesome. Well, thanks so much.